Pinball HQ, is it? It is indeed my work, rest and play. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it's pretty like what I imagined. Uh, a mess? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Hard, actually. An informal approach to tidiness, actually, yes. Jeff, we've got uh, quite a few machines here, most of which are in a state of some disrepair, it has to be <laughs> Yes, indeed. Do you have actually any machines that work? Yeah. Well, let me show you, actually. If I show you um, a sort of brief historical analysis of pinball machines... Now, what is this machine when it doesn't have flippers? No, it's a 1930s pinball machine. The original ones were very much like Bagatelle, with, it, with just mechanical action, as it were. This one, if you know, I insert my old penny in the slot. A, you've got the wonders of electric light, which was quite a wow at the time. Um, manual ball lifter, if you forgive the expression. And... Uh, this ball, this game, has actually got magnets, which, if I can persuade it to do something interesting, that was considered quite a wowy bit of action at the time, <laughs> I have to admit. I would describe his interest in pinball machines as an absolute obsession. It's taken to the point where it means everything to him. You can wake him up at 3 o'clock in the morning and have a coherent conversation about a particular coil on a particular machine. Anybody rings up and they want, to, they want to know just over the phone a quick analysis of what's gone wrong, he's able to do it. He's never worked from a circuit diagram. He's never been trained in any electronics, ever. And everything he's done is self-taught. He's got a sociology degree. I mean, this guy is not an electronic mechanic. Is everyone, there's all, all pin tables made in the 50s. This is a real 50s one. Again, scoring in lights like the previous one. This time you got flippers, natty little cigarette holder for the smokers amongst you. And uh, a bit of, you know, a bit more complicated, this one, really. Wonderful noise, isn't it? That's lovely, isn't it? It's rather like a sort of tram going on. Absolutely. And uh, this one, you're trying to complete a crossword, actually. strange when I played a teeth on and then I thought I'd love a hearse and I was looked at loads of them and then uh, Uncle Mally here actually showed me where this one lived. I'd seen it around but I didn't know it was for sale this was absolutely perfect. And you slide the pinball machines in and off where coffins used absolutely. to go. Absolutely and you've got a little pegs you put in to stop coffin wobble you know which is obviously quite a serious problem if you're allowed to take it. You don't want your, the poor remains of the deceased shooting out as you go up a hill or something. But it also stops the pin tables wobbling around, which is that they fit absolutely perfectly, actually. But I don't attach brass handles to them. Is this the one here? This is the yes, one. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. I can see here the machine. We are. I can know. Actually... We can take this out before we, um, before we play the night. Yeah, we are, actually. Yeah. This is Stephen Malley, who my, my magic elves are going to help me today. OK, Good cheers. See you in the All right. And we can just pick her up like that. We pop her down. Okay. And if you just put it down like that, it'd be fine. And then what I do, I just rest her on my leg. You can always tell pendle mechanics at parties because they stand on one leg in the corner of the kitchen. Can you develop anything like the equivalent of tennis elbow? Yeah, well, you get this enormous, enormous left leg, actually. And they have the special trousers, Mary. So, I won't go into details. Be gentle with her, boys. Gentle. You need to part. Right. It's really not dissimilar from a coffin, is it? It's very, very similar. If I just move that cardboard box... Um, and don't ever bring this back here again. <laughs> right. And then what we do then, slides in. Let me just put the... Um, this is to stop the coffin wobble that right. just goes That's in there. The coffin right. wobble. By the 60s, they'd invented the score reel. So instead of it lighting up in lights, you've got a score reel. Again, slightly more complicated games. This time, not so much Hollywood, but we're in the Wild West. Yes, we, that tends to occur, actually. You get science fiction, Wild West, and card games. This you've got the Wild West and the card game together. In machines like Cosmic Gunfight, you've got more. Right. An honest day's bit of work. Thanks very much. You 
It's more than just a, a few balls whizzing around on a, a lighting board. For Jeff, I believe it is a religion. Um, what you only have to see him play to see how he gets into the whole movement, the whole thing. It's unbelievable. See his eyes whizzing around. Can you relate to it? I can, I think. I could relate to it, but uh, not for such a long time. It's been going on for a long time with Jeff now. It's, it's more than just a fad. It's, uh, it's a tattoo. Jeff definitely has the stamina of like a Daley Thompson of the pinball world. These are called bingo machines. These were very, very popular in the 50s and 60s. I suppose one of the things which is nice about this machine is that even if you don't particularly win at it, you still sort of bask in the glory of Hollywood, rather reflected with these tacky looking characters below, reminding you that there's another world outside of the windswept pier that this thing was probably on. Mind you, most pin tables are about that, pulling people away from where they are. I mean, the draw of the machine isn't just the actual game itself. I mean, the whole thing. I mean, you see this, it looks good at these bright colours, people looking, wow, Zappy Zuby, jolly good show, having a wonderful time, wish you were here, darling, sort of thing. Thanks. Here you go. All right. Hey, right, all right. Charles, as you see, it's some, um, somewhat uh, crowded. This is a great rest home for pinballs. Yes, sort of, yes. Lucky you don't suffer from agoraphobia, in, isn't it? Um, well, actually, they don't really come not a rest. I mean, some are dead, but most of them are going to live again. It's sort of more a place of reincarnation, as it were. Is it a little unnerving when you, move, you walk into a room filled with Sort of inert machines, which you know with a bit of electricity spring into life. It, it is quite odd. It can be quite a... I mean, often when I'm working here, I'm not actually sort of looking over my shoulder because I actually get on very well with them all, you know, but uh, there is a feeling that you're amongst a host of souls rather than just sort of derelict uh, bits of wood and metal. And centaur. If you make a mistake, he says, bad move, human. <laughs> which is great, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> and here we have the rather uh, lovely uh, Matahari, actually. It's rather quaint. And you notice she's oh, actually he's speaking. A smooth he's piece, a bit of a smooth it? person, yeah. And you notice that she's about to knife the unfortunate chap. Uh, and, uh, oh, God, yeah. and where the knife is, the heraldic eagles that show where the score is for each player has come alive and is biting a snake. Yeah. She's saying, The Secret Map Baron. Can pinball, I mean, we see some fabulous pinball machines, but can they keep up with all of this? Because there's a hell of a lot going on, isn't there? A lot happening, but I think. If pinball doesn't actually have to keep up, it right. has to compete, but people want different types of experiences. They're like, this is all fun, this is all novelty stuff. A lot of kids can play this, they couldn't play a game of pinball where you have to know what's happening. But I don't think they're in competition as much because there's always a niche of pinball. People always go and enjoy playing it, you know. Um, these are novelty games that will come and go. Fine. Video games, Pac-Man and all that stuff, Teenage Mutant Turtles, all very fashionable and stuff. Pinball's going to be here forever. It's been here a long time. I think that everyone's obsession is personal by definition. There are certain things it brings up in there, I can't really describe it. Some of it is when I was young, I remember playing pinball and things to have then, you know, compared to now. It's, you know, it like brings me back in time. There are other things that are very new now, and every time I play pinball, I'm living in the past, the present, and hopefully the future as well. Some obsessive people, I think, are trying to run away from something else, possibly, or trying to find something. Um, and I think there's elements of obsession that are a bit perturbing and other elements that are not. I mean, if you, if you look upon a continuum, you know, like compulsive hand washing, you know, washing your hands occasionally is fine, doing it every five minutes is a bit of a problem. But let's be frank about this, because you're a little obsessive in your nature. You, you clean your teeth something like eight times a day. I clean my teeth, I collect toy robots, I play a lot of pinball machines, yeah. And I have a, a collection of derelict motorcycles, which is totally useless. Um, yeah, I'm an obsessive person, I'm quite cheerful about it, though. Here we have the insides of a sort of typical early 80s game. As you see, quite a lot happening. Awful lot of Still mechanics. Still a lot of spaghetti, isn't it? A lot of spaghetti, yeah. But also, um, if I can just pop the, uh, the play field down, you'll see that... The main transformation is, instead of lots of relays and things like the machine that we saw earlier, the bingo machine, uh, we've got absolutely loads of logic boards that can do it all. And, of course, speech. Can I just pop it through its paces, if I may? 
Talkative soul, so I might just pop it down for a moment. It says great things like hit the showers, and when you tilt it, it says, Help me! Like this in this pathetic voice, actually. It's rather distressing, really. I think he's obsessive about a number of things. He's obsessively polite as well. Yes, he really is. Yeah. I mean, embarrassingly obsessively polite. I think it's all part of his charm, though. When I first met him, he said he was called Pinball Jeff. I found it a bit of an irritating name, you know, because I thought. It's just pretentious, but actually now I think entirely the opposite. I think it's understatement, really. Should we call Pinball Pinball? Has he developed since you've known him? No, I think he's regressed. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, he spends more time with him as he sleeps with the wretched things, you know? I, I have, I do find that a bit disturbing. I mean, he can't get to sleep unless he's got things switched on. And they're like, they're chanting all the time, you know? <laughs> I think that's creepy. But you're prepared to sing in the same band with him? Uh, well, I don't have any choice, I don't need other drummers, so I have to get good with them. Well, good luck, man. Thank you. Think you'll ever lose interest in Pimble? Um, yeah, I will when I'm dead, actually. I think I will be taken to my funeral in my own hearse. I'd be buried in the pinball cabinet with tilt, you know, across the tombstone, or if I believe in the afterlife, maybe a bit of one replay left. And may maybe I'll go to the great arcade in the sky. All those machines I scrapped will be waiting for me to do them up. I don't know. And all those tacky individuals who used to doubt the fact that you'd put your coins in when you told them that you had, they go to hell, presumably. Oh, I hope so, yeah, and burn pleasantly here. Yeah. <laughs> along with the inventor of the video game. Incredible shot! 